Have you ever noticed those little logos on your TV box or streaming service that say HDR10, HDR10 Plus, and Dolby Vision, and wondered if they actually make a difference? These are HDR formats, and while they might seem confusing at first, the truth is they all try to do the same thing. Give you a better picture by preserving more detail, color, and contrast than standard video can handle. Now in this video, we're gonna break down what each format means, where you'll actually encounter them, how much they matter in the real world, and whether you should even care when buying your next TV, projector, or choosing a streaming service. Now first, let's start with the basics. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Unlike standard dynamic range video, HDR allows a display to show brighter highlights, deeper shadows, and a wider range of colors. The idea is simple. Real life has far more contrast and brightness than most TVs can reproduce, so HDR formats use metadata to tell your display how to map those values into its capabilities. That means when a movie shows a bright explosion against a starry sky, the details both in the flames and the tiny stars are preserved instead of being blown out or crushed into black. The most important thing is to understand that HDR is not about resolution. A 4K HDR movie and a 4K standard movie both have the same pixel count. HDR is about picture quality. Done right, it can make your screen look more lifelike and way more immersive. Now, let's examine the three formats. HDR10 is the most common and widely supported HDR format. It's the open standard and it's included on virtually every HDR capable TV, projector, and streaming service. HDR10 uses static metadata, which means the brightness and color mapping are set once for the entire movie or show. Since HDR movies and shows are often graded at a thousand nits or more, while most projectors and many TVs top out much lower, your device's tone mapping decides how to distribute that information. If it leans toward preserving bright highlights, you may lose subtle detail in the shadows. Now, if it prioritizes dark scenes, you risk blowing out the brightest areas. Now, for projectors, this tone mapping is absolutely critical. Because of the limited light output, once the image is blown up to 100 inches or more, well, TVs can more than often deliver HDR with less compromise. Now, the good news about HDR10 is it's compatible with most devices. Devices. Every streaming service pretty much supports it, every UHD Blu-ray disc has it, every modern TV can display it, and if you buy HDR content, HDR10 is guaranteed to be included. Now, HDR10 Plus was introduced by Samsung and Amazon as an improvement over HDR10 and is also royalty-free. Instead of static metadata, HDR10 Plus uses dynamic metadata. That means the TV gets new instructions for brightness and color on a scene-by-scene -scene basis or even frame-by-frame. -frame. This allows for more detail in dark sequences and more controlled highlights in the bright ones. Now next, Dolby Vision is the premium HDR format. It supports up to 12-bit color depth and peak brightness levels as high as 10,000 nits, far beyond what today's TVs can achieve. Like HDR10+, Plus, it uses dynamic metadata, but Dolby Vision allows for more granular control. Studios and colorists can actually tweak the metadata by hand during production. This gives content creators more control over how their movies and shows look on a wide variety of displays. Now, Dolby Vision is licensed by Dolby, so TV makers and content providers have to pay to use it, but that hasn't stopped really wide adoption here. Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, and many any other streaming services offer most of their HDR content in Dolby Vision. Almost every UHD Blu-ray with premium mastering includes Dolby Vision. LG, Sony, and many other TV brands also support it. Game consoles like Xbox Series X also support Dolby Vision for both streaming and gaming. Now, most recently, Dolby has taken things a step further with Dolby Vision 2. Now, although it's still very new, this second generation format shows where HDR is headed. It brings a brand new image engine and something Dolby calls content intelligence an AI-powered system that adapts the picture to both the content you're watching and the environment that you're actually in. That means dark scenes should stay more visible, highlights will stay more controlled, and the overall balance of brightness and contrast is tuned way more intelligently. Now, it also introduces bi-directional tone mapping, which allows premium TVs to use their higher brightness and their wider color capabilities without drifting away from the artistic grade. Now, another major addition is authentic motion, which is a tool that gives filmmakers the ability to adjust motion smoothing on a shot-by-shot -shot basis to reduce judder while keeping the picture cinematic. So in other words, instead of your TV deciding how to handle the motion, the director can actually have a say in it, which is pretty cool. Now it also comes in two tiers, a standard version aimed at mainstream TVs and a Dolby Vision 2 Max version 
reserved for the highest performing displays. The good news is that all existing Dolby Vision content will still play everywhere, but only TVs designed for Dolby Vision 2 will be able to take advantage of these new metadata and features when it's available. Now, as this rolls out, we will definitely be testing it here at Audio Advice a lot, and we'll update our article linked down below with our thoughts on this new standard and what we come across with it. Now, the next part I wanna bring up is projectors. HDR is a totally different story when it comes to projectors. Most projectors deliver somewhere between 75 and 150 nits, and HDR is typically mastered at 1,000 nits or more. That's a huge mismatch, meaning projectors must rely on their tone mapping technology to remap the bright signal into their much dimmer output, way more than TVs have to rely on it. Almost all HDR capable projectors support HDR10 as a baseline, and over time, brands like Sony, Epson, and JVC have made some pretty big strides with tone mapping, making HDR content far more enjoyable than it was just a few years ago. And when it comes to HDR10 Plus support on projectors, it used to be rare, but that is starting to change. JVC's NZ series projectors can read HDR10 Plus metadata, and Epson's Pro Cinema models also support full HDR10. And now Dolby Vision is almost non-existent on projectors. The licensing requirement and extra processing just make it impractical for most models. Now, for projector owners, the most important factor is not which HDR format is listed on the spec sheet, but how good your tone mapping system is in that projector. External gear can also help here too. Advanced processors like MadVR can analyze every single frame and provide the best possible HDR picture quality regardless of which HDR format is being used. I'll leave a link down below if you want to learn more about MadVR and how it can help your projector. Now that we've defined the formats and where they work best, the next question is whether you can actually even see a difference between them. That answer depends on both the display you're using and the content that you're watching. On high-end OLED or mini LED TVs with excellent brightness and contrast, the difference between HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision is usually pretty subtle. Dolby Vision might show slightly more pop and vibrancy, while HDR10 Plus can feel a little more natural. HDR10 on its own might look a little flatter, but still just excellent. Now on mid-range and budget TVs, Dolby Vision can make a pretty big difference here. Because it allows for scene-by-scene -scene adjustment and often comes with higher bitrate streams, Dolby Vision can fix issues that plague cheaper panels and details that look crushed in HDR10 can suddenly appear in Dolby Vision. It's also worth noting that some of what you see is not not always the format itself, but how the content is mastered. Two movies in the same format can look very different depending on the decisions made in the grading suite, so format alone does not guarantee a certain look. Now, UHD Blu-ray discs almost always include HDR10, and many also carry Dolby Vision too. Now, Dolby Vision on disc can actually be even more advanced than streaming because of the higher bit rates and the less compression. HDR10 Plus also exists on disc too, but it's far less common. Now, for those of you building reference level home theaters, Kaleidoscape is another option worth mentioning here. Kaleidoscape downloads movies in bit-for-bit -bit quality that matches UHD Blu-ray, often with even higher full bit rates and full lossless audio, and support for HDR formats, including Dolby Vision and HDR10. It eliminates the compression compromises of streaming while also offering the convenience of a digital library. I'll leave a link down below if you want to learn more about Kaleidoscape. All right, so which HDR format should you prioritize? Well, the truth is that your TV or projector's HDR performance is far more important than the logo on the box. Peak brightness, contrast ratio, tone mapping accuracy, and color volume all determine how good your HDR looks. For example, a Samsung S95D OLED only supports HDR10 and HDR10+, while an LG G4 OLED only supports Dolby Vision. Put them side by side with high quality content and both will look spectacular. The Samsung may feel more faithful to real life, while the LG might look more vibrant with Dolby Vision, but either way, you're getting a world-class HDR experience because of the panels themselves, not just the format. On the other hand, if you do buy a budget TV with 300 or 400 nits of brightness, Dolby Vision can rescue poor HDR HDR performance a little bit and make the content look far better than HDR10 alone. That's where the format support really is going to matter. Now for projectors, the deciding factor is again, is not the HDR format at all, but how good the tone mapping engine is. So at the end of the day, HDR formats are about getting you closer to the director's intent and making movies, shows, and games feel more real. Buy the best performing display that you can for your room and let format support be the tiebreaker, not the main drivers. Now if you have more questions on this or you need help deciding which TV or projector is right for you, reach out to our team of experts at audioadvice.com or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.